Turning lights around, I worship you. 
ICI's family, it's good to see you all. Yeah, um, again, we're meeting online, and I am so sorry that we have to do it now. Like, how many weeks, how many days, how many months? Um, though we are not worshiping together face to face, we still do it online. So, we are, I am very grateful that at least we can uh, do this online together. Um, we are starting a new series today in this month of July. It's called a tunnel, and we are going to follow the story of David uh, right before he became a king, and probably the most painful uh, time, the part of his life. Uh, it's a time of him being a fugitive uh, from King Saul, who's uh, pursuer uh, trying to kill him because King Saul thought that David could be uh, a threat uh, to his kingship so um, we're gonna that's that happens in the later part of first Samuel so we're gonna follow his story and uh, imagine you know how how painful how uh, how uh, how, how difficult uh, that journey must be to him. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and we're going to jump into the text first. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10 to 15. 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10 
to 15. I'm going to read the passage for you. This is ESV version. Uh, and David rose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said to him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of him in dances? Saul has struck down his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And David took these words to heart and was much afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in their hands and made masks, made marks, I'm sorry, made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Behold, you see the man is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack madmen that you have brought this fellow to behave as a madman in my presence? Shall this fellow, fellow come into my house? This story of David, um, again, fleeing from King Saul who is trying to kill him uh, because he felt uh, David was a threat to his kingship. And now he is in the the city the uh, that, that called uh, Gath and the king of Gath his name is Achish and Achish's man uh, was very cautious they were cautious about David because David once was very popular uh, warrior hero in Israel and the Israel people were singing uh, Saul killed uh, thousands and David killed ten thousands I guess that song was a great one of the big hits uh, in Israel back then and this, uh, the Akash's people the, the generals were cautious you know this he can be David can be a threat speaking of a threat actually nowadays we know there is a big threat the biggest threat we probably have faced last I don't know, many years which is COVID-19 uh, we didn't know it was gonna take this long we didn't know again we because of this we didn't know we're not gonna uh, be able to have um, gather and worship together face to face for this long and it's been really hard and we talk about it all the time we think of it all the time and we are very cautious uh, and it is wise uh, thing for us to be cautious and stay healthy stay strong um, but anyway I actually saw this uh, cartoon uh, a, one uh, picture cartoon kind of thing and I thought it was funny so let me share that with you uh, this COVID-19 virus uh, artist is a musician now and right before he performs the next song he sings the next song he goes this one's dedicated to all the people that didn't believe in me when I was getting started <laughs> I know maybe it's too bad this is so bad that you're not supposed to be laughing at this but I thought it was funny uh, but uh, let's go back to David David is in a very hard time of his life like I said uh, King Saul was not really happy with uh, you know having a rival, uh, a potential king to be around him. So he was trying to kill him, and uh, David started running. Uh, the passage right before uh, the part we just read is about uh, is uh, that that king uh, David ran to this a uh, city called Anab. And there is a there it's just a city of a priest, and he found Himelik, uh, a, a, a priest, and asking for help. Do you have any bread, food to eat? Do you have any weapon that I can use? And Himelik didn't know uh, King Saul was after David, so he was like, "Oh, we have a holy bread. I guess it's not the ordinary bread, but you have to, you know, have you been have you kept yourself holy last?" You know, three days, four days a week, and David was like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me the bread. Give us the bread." And then the only weapon we have is the sword of Goliath. You know, the guy you killed. 
is it okay? And David goes like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything is good for me now. Uh, later, what happened is King Saul arrived the city of Nob and there's a guy named Doeg and he actually knew what happened and he made a report to uh, King Saul and Saul, King Saul was mad at uh, Ahimelech and he killed all the priests, everybody in that town too. I mean, imagine, uh, I mean, uh, living uh, the, the part of life that is painful, that is helpless, hope, hopeless, it is sad, it is hard. But when you actually see people around you becoming a victim of that, they get, uh, they get uh, all the damages from uh, your, uh, your, uh, your tunnel, your hardship in your life. It is hard, isn't it? I mean, uh, living out your own hardship is hard, but giving that hardship, passing that hardship, the toast, toasting that hardship over to other people around you, people you care about, that's even harder. A couple of weeks ago, I, we had this one time, one time, uh, face-to-face worship gathering at Riverside Church. Uh, and then the, this new cases, the number of new cases went up, so we decided not to gather anymore. It was a one, one-time thing. Uh, we didn't really plan that way, but that's how it happened. A couple weeks ago, uh, I, was getting ready, I was getting ready to do preaching, uh, online preaching. Uh, it was Sunday morning, and all the staff, including me, have to check our body temperature with thermometer. And unlike usual, my body temperature kept actually coming very high. It was 38.8, 38.8 Celsius. I know some of you are more familiar with the Fahrenheit, so you don't really feel it like 38.8. I don't know. Is is it really high? Is really is it really high? Uh, it's really really high. 38.8 is like when you have a very serious flu, then you get that kind of fever. Yeah, then 38.8 is that high. And I had that, the thermometer actually kept giving me that number for two, three hours. I was, I was very nervous. I panicked, everybody, everybody else in that room panicked. They actually started kind of like walking backward from me, like a little bit away from me. Like they actually saw me as a new case, a confirmed case of COVID-19. You know that the, one of the symptoms of COVID-19 case confirmed case is that high fever right so they just i i even believe that i thought okay now i have this covid19 and i i look back the places that i went to and people i met in that week passed by and it's totally possible nowadays it's totally possible you actually can get you know uh that 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 the virus from other people because you know the, the number is really high. It's, if, anywhere you can actually uh, be in the room with a, a person who has the virus. Anyway, so it made me really sad. It made me really nervous. But the one thing that really bothered me most is that there are people in that room with me together, and then they have a very little kiss. So. I started like imagining, you know, what if I mean, what if I am a new case? I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a COVID nineteen virus holder, which means I can be contagious. Which means the people who work with me, who are in that room, I mean, right now, uh, they can get this virus from me. Which means they're a little kiss, they're a little kiss, very little kiss. They we have even had, you know, you know who Taewon is, right? He's just got the third uh, ch- third kid in their family, his newborn baby. I imagine, like, what if the newborn baby get the, this disease from me? It was, it was very uh, painful. It was, it was heartaching. Later, I found out that the thermometer has some issue. So, uh, particularly with me, 
So the number kind of came up high because it didn't really, it wasn't really functioning right properly. Anyway, before that time, um, me getting a disease, me having that virus, was hard. It was I mean, devastate. Uh, it was very painful. But imagining other people uh, getting damage uh, from me or through me, it was even more more uh, more difficult. Uh, I mean, imagine David's situation. David, I mean, you know he's going to become a king later. And he got anointed by Samuel, which means God actually appointed David to be next king. So you may think, well, he's going to be a king anyway you know, later. So this, you know, this, this kind of pain, hardship, I guess he can kind of walk through, he can go through. You can kind of, you know, bear with it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, if someone asks me, hey, Sonny, I, I mean, if God shows me my dream, or I don't know, and then tells me, oh, you're going to be a king. First of all, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what kind of goodies come with this kingship. I don't want to be a king. I don't know about you, but I am not interested in becoming a king at all. Maybe LeBron James is interested in becoming king. Not me. So I'll probably say, no, no, God, no, I don't want to be a king. Uh, but you may say, oh, you're going to become a king, and the plan is, but you will have to go through some very painful time, but in the end, you will be a king. Uh, but still, I don't know, if the pain is that much, if it requires you, to go through that much hardship, would you really take that as a yes? I mean, with a yes. And in David's case, I think the same thing. He never actually wanted to be a king. He was a shepherd boy. And all of a sudden, God sent Samuel and anointed him to be a next king. But not like right away. After very years, after years of hardship, years of uh, this time of difficulty. Uh, sometimes we we find ourselves in that kind of situation. If we are in a we are in this uh, journey of life, and sometimes, maybe too often, we find ourselves in a process, uh, in a journey, in a in the part of a journey that looks just unending. And too painful and I feel like I am giving hard time to other people all because of me and I don't know maybe uh, among the people uh, some of you who are watching this right now are in walking in that part of your your life journey uh, just you it doesn't seem uh, you know, it's gonna end and the pain is too much and you feel like you are even given because of you everybody else around you having a hard time too David is in this situation and we want to know how he actually uh, feels how he handles himself and you know in this situation um, there's some Psalms uh, written uh, by David and some psalms actually are written in different parts of his life and we do have a psalm that is written uh, in the part in particularly in this time of his life it's a psalm 56 um, psalm 56 uh, let me read the psalm for you to the choir master according to the dove on far off uh, terabines a mictum of David when the Philistines seized him in Gath you see it was written in Gath be gracious to me O God for a man tread on me all day long an attacker oppresses me my enemies trample on me all day long for many attack uh, me proudly when I am afraid I put my trust in you in God 
whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh uh, do to me? All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape. In wrath cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back. In the day when I call this, I know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from failing, that I may walk before God in the light of life. In this time of hardship, David uh, sings. It was so hard, it was so painful, it was so humiliating that he even acted insane uh, in front of this uh, Akish king of Gath. And in time like that, uh, David is writing this psalm, uh, basically saying, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. If you look at the passage, verse 3, verse 4, verse 11, the same, uh, same expression appears repeatedly. It says, uh, I put my trust in you, verse 3, verse 4, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. And verse 11, uh, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. Um, he is afraid. He is scared. Uh, he knows that you know uh, King Saul is after him. He cannot go back home. And in this foreign land, everybody around him is enemy. And he never actually wanted to be a king. He never actually planned to be a king. God appointed him to be a next king. And then he's his pain, his suffering started. Now he all he can do is pray. What is the meaning here? Trusting in God. Trusting in God. Uh, I got one phone call from a, uh, one of the uh, congregations in Riverside Church, and it was a lady. Uh, she was asking if I have time to, you know, kind of hear her story and pray for her. So I said, yeah. And then she was basically saying she found out that her husband was having an affair. And it was not the first time. For 20 years of their span of marriage, it was actually the fifth time she found that out. And she, I mean, obviously had a very difficult time, a very painful time. And she was um, thinking about getting a divorce. But, it, I mean, that was really hard, right? But the, the reason she called me wasn't really that. Uh, one the, the thing that she really had a hard time with is that she has been a Christian, like, since, you know, since her birth, you know, her family was Christian family. And she, she's always had this faith. And what she was saying, Pastor Sonny, I love God and I have faith in God and I love Jesus but in time like this I feel like I am so angry at God I'm, I'm like why me God why now have I not been a good child to you have I not been a good follower to you and I don't want to even pray and this actually disappoints me I've been a, I've been a believer for many years and in time like these I don't even want to pray. I don't want to. I don't want to even, you know, reach out to God. That's the hard part, Pastor Sonny. What should I do? We all actually face that kind of situation in our lives. Our pain is so big. Our, our, uh, uh, the, the, the problems that we face in our lives just drag us along uh, to the deepest pit, and we feel like. We don't even have a strength to pray. We don't even have, you know, uh, this power to reach out for God. 
So I said to her, I heard your story and I feel you. It must be excruciatingly, excruciatingly painful. It must be really hard. But I'll say, you can't, you know, just be like that for a while. Uh, you've been reaching out to God many years and if you feel like you're so helpless and you feel like you don't have any, 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 any energy, you don't, have a, you don't even have any power, I mean strength to reach out to God, then don't, don't, you don't have to. Trusting God actually means you do all the prayers, you do all the worship and you do all your religious acts to you know hold on to God yeah maybe that's trusting God but I think deeper meaning of a trusting God is even when you don't have strength to strength to do that my God will never ever give up on me even there are times for the you know when I feel like I cannot even say your name God I cannot even call out to you Yet, you are still holding me in your mighty arm. That's trust. David, I don't think David is in a situation where, Okay, God, I'm in a very uh, difficult time of my life right now, so I'll worship you more, and I'll pray more, you know, I'll do all those things more to find you. No, I don't think that's the case here. I think David is in a so hopeless situation. He lost the people who helped him because just because he they, they helped him you know and and then he have to act insane to survive and he goes like okay okay I'll do all the religious pro, uh, procedure to find God no he just feels like he's done with his life yet this is what he says I trust in you God which actually means I got nobody around me and my life is so bad right now. But the only thing that I can rely on, the only thing that I can that I can find in my life is that you are with me. You are holding me in my life. That's all I can do. That's actually trust. Psalm fifty six, it ends like this. For you have delivered my soul from death. You're the one who kept me. You're the one who protect me from all those places that, you know, places of death. You're the one. Yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. You're the only one. Oh, every tear that I shed, every, every, uh, groaning from my suffering uh, it's not meaningless they all counted God actually put everything gather all those and kept them in the bottle which actually means it feels like I'm helpless there's nothing that I can do about this situation I still have you God I cannot even call out to you but you are the one who keeps me in a situation like this. Uh, later on, uh, we found a very interesting passage, which actually means all different kinds of people who, the next chapter, chapter 22, goes like this. David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. No, oh, he's in the cave. A cave. He lives in the cave. And when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And his family safely arrived at this cave. They feel like, oh, at least his family is safe. Really? They all live in a cave. And everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, uh, and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him. And he became commander over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Now, uh, he, David escaped from uh, Gath. And he lives in the cave in Ajalum. And his family is there. And all these losers 
came to David. Now he is a king of losers. You know, people who are in debt, people who are bitter in their soul, people who are in distress, they're gathered together. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? We all thought David was going to become a king of Israel. Now he's king of losers. But if you think about it, if you, when you feel like God is not even near me, when you feel like God does not really feel my pain, when you feel like God does not even know uh, what kind of hardship that I go through, when you feel like God does not see the tears on my eyes, God always shows us His one and only Son, Jesus. You know what? Jesus actually became a king of losers too. He became a king of us. And saying, you know what? King of kings, Lord of lords, my one and only son became nobody. King of losers. I know your pain. I see your tears. I know, I know all those hardships that you are walking through. I know. A few weeks ago, uh, I, was, I, I, was, uh, I went out to pick up the dinner. Uh, it was Burger King uh, for my family. Uh, it was uh, it was dinner for us. The Burger King Burger King Burger Burger King Burgers dinner for dinner for us. So I picked up the dinner. I parked the car. I was uh, coming to the the gate of our apartment building, and I saw that the delivery man was kind of waiting in front of the gate. I think it was the waiting. Uh, the response from the person who ordered the food because he's a delivery man delivery person so well, since I know the passcode I did it for him and then we were in the elevator all of a sudden he actually started a conversation with me he was like hey how you doing I'm like oh yeah I'm good and he goes like hey, how's your work I'm like yeah works okay you and then he goes, well, ah, it's been, it's been busy, you know, the COVID-19, uh, you know that, you know, you know how it feels. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and many orders? And he goes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of orders. And sometimes I had to wait outside too, too long. And sometimes it takes too, too much time for them to answer uh, the phone. Uh, don't you sometimes you know, experience that too? I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we were actually on this, we uh, got out on the same floor because the next door neighbor they uh, ordered that food, and uh, we were standing right in front of the doors, right my my house door, and he was waiting uh, in front of the person who ordered the food their door, and then I plugged in the number, the passcode, and our door, my door, and then I saw him. He was shocked. He was like. <gasps> I was like, why is he shocked? And later, I look, thinking back, looking back, I realized that he thought I was a delivery man too. Because <laughs> I was wearing this hoodie and I was like this, holding the burger back in my hand. So he kind of assumed that I was delivering the burgers. And then what I, he was delivering, I think it was chicken. So he just assumed that I was working in that industry that's why he started a conversation with me that's why he kept saying you know you know and i didn't really know that but i kind of answered yeah 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 he definitely believed that i was one of the delivery industry people and he got shocked because i actually entered the door i went in the house I thought it was funny, yeah. Uh, I mean, it is. I'm not like, I'm not belittling uh, the importance of this delivery uh, industry uh, people. I mean, it, it was my honor to be considered as uh, one of their kinds. Uh, but I thought it was really funny. He kind of trust me on that very brief moment. He kind of like share his life with me in that brief moment. He kind of opened his heart to me in that brief moment and he felt kind of oneness in the elevator. Why? 
because he thought I was, you know, working for in the in industry too. I was a delivery boy too. That's what our God did. You know, when we go like, ah, my life is too painful, hopeless. The reason, the reason why we can put our uh, trust in God is that He actually became you know, one of us. He didn't mind coming down to the earth and, and getting tortured, getting, uh, getting humiliated, and getting murdered on that tree. Jesus is a king of losers, losers like you, loser like me. And Jesus is saying, you know what, I know your pain. I know your hardship. Yeah, I've been there, done it. And you are not alone. Sometimes you feel hopelessness. You will feel powerlessness. You'll feel emptiness in your life. And you feel like this hardship, this journey will never end. You will never see the light again in, in that tunnel. Yet Jesus is saying, you know what? That's not right. I'll be walking with you and I will be in the light to you. In this COVID-19 situation, uh, we all feel frustrated. I mean, your jobs may be altered in a way that you never actually wanted, you never actually planted, uh, you never actually planned, uh, your family, your finances, I don't know, even your health. Yet, yet, maybe, maybe. This is a time, this is a part of our life, the journey where we can find our God being our light, being our help. A God we can trust even more. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you're our God. Uh, sometimes we feel so frustrated and uh, this, especially uh, this, this time of COVID-19. Maybe uh, some of us uh, who are watching this uh, right now are having very, very difficult time in their lives. I cannot even imagine. You know, but you know, you know their pain. You know the struggle is happening in their hearts, in their lives. So God, please help us to see you find your presence in this journey. We help us to remember that all the tears, all the groanings, they are all in the bottle that you have for us. They are all counted, they are all remembered. And, and beyond that, beyond what we see, you will walk with us and you will lead us uh, after all. And please help us to find Jesus who is walking with us. We didn't mind coming to down to the earth and getting humiliated, tortured, murdered. You know our pain. You know our sufferings. Help us to help us not to lose your presence uh, in us. You're awesome, God. Uh, if anybody's having hard time in their lives right now, please put your hands over their hearts, heal them, and encourage them, embrace them, and you will become hope to them and their journey. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless. I'll see you next week.